Hello viewers, I welcome you on the lecture series of corporate accounting. Under today's lecture, we shall take up a new unit which is unit 6 and we shall take up the topic which is known as cash flow statements. So, under today's lecture, our main area of discussion is cash flow statement, its meaning, the methodology to prepare it and the significant accounting standards which are necessary to be complied with for preparation of the cash flow statements. So, let us highlight on the objective of the lecture. The objective of this lecture is to analyze the method of preparation of cash flow statements in accordance with accounting standard 3 issued by the Council of Institute of Chartered Accountant of India. For some organizations, it is mandatory to prepare the cash flow statements along with the balance sheet and income statement. However, it is recommendable to prepare the cash flow statements so that the end user or the shareholders may get to know about the movements of the cash and net assets of the organization. So, there are certain methods being given under AS3, following them we need to prepare the cash flow statements. So, let us highlight on the objective of the lecture. Firstly, explaining the meaning of cash flow statements. Secondly, identify the sources and application of cash flow statements. Thirdly, ascertain the accounting impact of various transactions on various items to be shown in cash flow statement. So, here disclosure requirements need to be abide by. Fourthly, prepare cash flow statement by direct method or indirect method and then finally, we will appreciate the usefulness of cash flow statements. So, in all, our objective of lecture is to learn in length since meaning that is from the inception of the meaning of the cash flow statement till its usefulness or significance. So, let us start up with the introductory part of the cash flow statements where we shall highlight its meaning first. Cash flow statements have to be learned in detail in the light of accounting standard 3. So, first of all, let us understand what do we mean by cash flow statement. Cash flow statement provides information that enables users to evaluate the changes in net assets of an enterprise, its financial structure and its ability to affect the amount and timing of cash flows in order to adapt to the changing circumstances and opportunities. So, let us make small chunks of the meaning being given. Firstly, it is a statement where it is to be prepared in the form of statement rather than a account. Now, what does it serves? It serves the purpose of giving information to the end user or shareholders about what? About the changes in the net assets of the enterprise, its financial structure and ability to affect the amount and timing of cash. We require such cash flow so that we can adapt the changing circumstances or opportunities. That means, we can have a control over the cash positions by analyzing the positions of the cash being employed under various activities of the business organization. Accounting standard 3 recommends that listed companies and other industrial, commercial and business enterprises will have to provide to their shareholders and public in general a cash flow statement along with the balance sheet and income statement. So, here AS3 specifically clears that it is not mandatory for every organization to go for preparation of cash flow statement. It is applicable to the selected set of the corporate entities among it the listed companies would be required to prepare the cash flow statement and those industries which are coming under the threshold limit which is being given under AS3. The standard lays down procedures and guidelines for the preparation and presentation of cash flow statement. So, we need to abide by the procedural aspect as well as the guidelines being given by accounting standard 3 in order to prepare as well as present our cash flow statement. When we talk about preparation and presentation, 
they are two different things. Preparation has to be done in the format which is being prescribed by the AS3 and presentation means the disclosure requirement that what particular items need to be disclosed and how they need to be disclosed. So, while preparing the cash flow statements, we need to follow the guidelines which are being given. Certain important items are being treated as special items, how they need to be dealt with and we have to analyze the nature of each and every transaction as well as the nature of enterprise so that correct classification of the cash flows can be made in order to give the fair and true view of the cash flow statements to the end users. Now, there are certain terminologies associated with cash flow statements. Let us understand them. The first one is what constitute cash and the cash flow statement? It is a question to be answered because it is a very prominent question that what shall be the cash and the cash flow statement. Here cash does not mean money in hand, it will include certain other parts. So, here cash comprises of cash on hand and demand deposits with bank. Now, demand deposits with bank should be understood very clearly. Demand deposits means deposits which are repayable by bank on the demand by depositors. That means those demand deposits which are repayable on demand are considered as demand deposits and they shall form the part of cash under cash flow statements. Now, another terminology is cash equivalent. What do you mean by cash equivalents? Cash equivalents are the short term highly liquid investments that are readily convertible into known amounts of cash and which are subject to insignificant risk of change in value. So, let us understand what do we mean by this definition being given. It says that cash equivalent is a highly liquid asset into our hands. Highly liquid asset means that can be readily converted into the money or cash. We can sell that into the market and fetch the cash and we can readily buy it from the market when we have surplus cash. So, cash equivalents are a sort of highly liquid assets into the hands and they are subject to a very lesser amount of risk. Their value also is not going to change in the near future. Cash equivalents are held for the purpose of meeting short term cash commitments rather than for investment or for any other purpose. So, this is a liquid cash. So, we can meet up our short term cash commitments out of the cash equivalents available with us. However, movement of cash between items that constitute cash or cash equivalents are not included in cash flows as these components are part of cash management. Cash flows here means simply cash inflows and cash outflows relating to operating, financing and investing activities. So, from here we can assess that cash flows are further being classified into three broad segments. Let us understand how cash flows are being classified under AS3. Classification of cash flow is as follows. The first one is operating cash flow, second one is financing cash flow and third one is investing cash flow. So, the entire cash inflow or outflow in an organization will be classified and accumulated under the respective head and the net amount of each of these items would be clubbed and we will get the final cash equivalents and we will add up it in the opening balances so that we can get our closing cash equivalent. So, now a question comes into our mind is that what do we mean by these three different types of cash flows and what shall constitute operating cash flow, how financing cash flows would be generated and what shall come under the investing cash flows. We will take up them one by one and learn in detail with the help of examples to understand very clearly the nature and the meaning of all these types of cash flows. The first one is cash flows from operating activities that is operating cash flow. 
operating activities are the principal revenue producing activities of the enterprise and other activities that are not investing and financing activities. Operating activities include cash effects of those transactions and events that enter into the determination of net profit or loss. So, here we can say that all those activities which put their emphasis on the determination of the net profit or loss would be considered as operating activities. In much simplified manner, we can say that those activities which are necessary for running the business or conducting the business would be considered as operating activities because these activities are carried out so that the revenues can be generated plus the profits can be earned. Now, what these activities are? If we exemplify them, we can say that making of sales of the units so produced, purchasing the raw material, these are the necessary activities for running the business, hence they shall form the part of operating activities. So, the very basic activities associated for running the business would fall under the operating activities. One more thing the definition says that these are the activities which are not investing and financing activities. So, in order to clearly understand operating activities, we need to understand in detail about investing and financing activities also. Let us exemplify various activities which shall fall under operating activities. First one is cash receipts from sale of goods and rendering of services. If it is a service entity, the rendering of services would be the basic activity which is necessary for generating revenues and earning profit, while sale of goods would be necessary for manufacturing and trading industries. So, this type of activities will fall under operating activities, cash receipt from royalties, fees, commission and other revenues, they shall also be considered as operating activities any cash payment to supplier for the goods and services, cash payment to and on behalf of employees since the payments to employees would be necessary for running the business, cash receipts and payment of an insurance enterprise for premiums and claims, annuities and other policies. So, these are the activities which gives us a clear idea that what shall fall under the operating activities. We need to consider both inflows and outflows associated with the respective activities, so that the net cash flow can be ascertained out of each segment of the activity, that is each segment of cash flow, operating, financing and investing activities. Now moving ahead, we will learn about cash flows from investing activities. Investing activities are the acquisition and disposal of long term assets and other investments not included in cash equivalent. In other words, investing activities includes transactions and events that involve the purchase and sale of long term productive assets. So, investing activities are very clear with these definitions that these are the activities which are necessary or which are associated with the purchase or sales of the fixed assets because fixed assets are generally long term assets. So, simplifying or for a purpose of understanding the financing activities, we can always remember that if we have purchased certain asset, we have sold off certain assets, they would be falling under investing activities and these assets would be assets having a long term benefit such as plant and machinery, land and building and it shall also include intangibles. Now, let us highlight the examples from investing activity. The first one is acquisition of fixed assets including intangibles, disposal of fixed assets including intangible, disposal of means selling of the fixed assets, acquisition or disposal of shares, warrants or debt instruments of other enterprise and interest in joint venture. So, here the important term is such shares, warrants or debt instruments would be of any other enterprise which either we have acquired or purchased and not of the enterprise which is conducting the business itself because it is an investment in other enterprise and it will be considered as a long term investment. 
cash advance and loans made to third parties, cash receipts and payments relating to future contracts, forward contracts, option contracts and many more like swaps etc. But they should not be meant for the trading purpose. Their objective is to be of investment in the long term nature. Now the next one is cash flows from the financing activities. The financing activities are the activities that result in change in the size and composition of owner's capital. That means that whatever activities have been associated or which is being reflected in the change in the capital structure of the company would be considered as financing activity. For example, a further issue of shares have been made. Earlier there were 1 lakh share capital, now the share capital has increased to 2 lakh. So what has happened that there is a change in the owner's capital. So such activities which are associated with the change in the size and composition of owner's capital would fall under the financing activities. So payment of dividend and the interest would also fall under financing activities including preference share capital in the case of a company and borrowing of the enterprise. So let us highlight certain examples so that we can clearly classify the activities under the head cash flows from financing activities. The first one is issue of shares or similar instruments such as stock they shall form under the financing activities, issue of debentures, loans notes, bonds and other short term borrowings. Redemption of debenture that means paying back the capital invested under redemption to the debenture holders bonds, redemption of preference shares that is paying back the preference shares and payment of dividend. So they shall all be falling under financing activities. Now there are certain special items which need to be dealt when we prepare the cash flow statements because cash flow statement is not only restricted to the preparation but also presentation should be in accordance with the guidelines being given by AS3. So there are certain special items which need to be dealt very clearly and peculiarly with the cash flow statements. The first one is non-cash transactions, second one is acquisition and disposal of subsidiary and other business unit, third one is taxes on income. Fourth one is extraordinary items and fifth one is interest and dividend. So let us highlight what is falling under non-cash transactions. Non-cash transactions or non-cash items we need to learn. The exclusion of non-cash transaction from cash flow statement is consistent with the objective of a cash flow statement as they do not involve cash flow in the current period. That means non-cash transactions while preparing the cash flow statements. Following are the examples of non-cash transactions. The acquisition of assets by assuming directly related liabilities. That means instead of paying cash, we have taken up the liability of the enterprise of whose assets we have purchased. So there, in this case there is no cash outflow, rather the liabilities are being exchanged for the cash. The acquisition of an enterprise by means of issue of shares. Our enterprise is being acquired but rather than paying the consideration in cash, we have issued them the shares of the company. So there is no outflow of the cash again in this transaction. Conversion of debt into equity, this also does not amount to any cash outflow. So where there is no cash outflow and mere accounting entry is being affected. Under that case, we will not take that very transaction into consideration. Similarly, depreciation is also considered to be a non-cash transaction. If it is included in the computation of the net profits, that means we have subtracted depreciation. Now at the time of preparation of the uh, cash flow statement, we need to add it back to the net profits. Another one is acquisition and disposal of subsidiary and other business units. 
the aggregate cash flows arising from acquisition and from disposal of the subsidiaries or other business unit should be presented separately and classified as investing activities so such transactions would be falling under the cash flows from investing activities next one is taxes on income taxes paid are usually treated as cash flows from operating activities because tax is chargeable on the net profit hence it is mostly associated with the operating activities however in case it is possible to identify the tax cash flow with an individual transaction that give rise to cash flow that are classified as investing or financing activities it is appropriate to classify the tax cash flow as an investing or financing activity exemplifying we can say that there is a capital gain on sale of an asset and there is a tax being given under that capital gains tax would be then considered as part of investing activity so similarly each item has to be identified and tax treatment should be done accordingly the next special item is extraordinary items extraordinary items are those items which are not occurring regularly in the business activities their reason is sudden or one time they are not recurring items so how we will disclose them while preparation of the cash flow statement the cash flow associated with extraordinary items such as bad debts recovered claims from insurance companies winning from a lawsuit or lottery etc are disclosed separately from operating investing and financing activity as the case may be in the cash flow statement so again we need to analyze the nature of such extraordinary item and we will classify them into the activity with which it is being associated next one is interest and dividends interest and dividends should be understood by segregating the enterprises in two parts the financing enterprises and other enterprises financial enterprises are those enterprises which are doing the business of financing so under that such case the cash flows would be considered as cash flows from operating activities that means interest and dividends for a financial enterprises would always be forming the part of operating activities while in case of other enterprises interest paid would be a financing activity interest and dividend received would be on account of investing activities because they are the returns on the investment so made while dividend paid is again a financing activity next one is foreign currency cash flows so again they need to be recorded in the reporting currency of the enterprise and the exchange rate should be applied on to them for the conversion now students we are summarizing our lecture of today in today's lecture we have learned the preparation and presentation of cash flow statement in the light of accounting standard 3 issued by icai where cash flows are being classified under three major heads operating cash flows financing cash flows and investing cash flows we have also learned the relative terminologies associated with the cash flow statements and we have given various examples to understand each and every activity clearly special items are also being dealt with which are to be taken care of while preparation and presentation of cash flow statements with this we are ending up our lecture of today thank you